Okay, guys, the moment that you have been waiting for, we're going to finish designing this site with our div tags. Now we got all the H1 tag and all that stuff out of the way here. We're still not out of the woods yet because there's a couple more tags we still need to create. We still need to create the paragraph tag and image tag, etc., etc. Okay, so how do we format the rest of our div tags? Very simple. Now here's the objective here. I want to make the site nav about 150 pixels wide. It's going to be our navigation system on the left. Main content is going to go to the right of that, and to the right of that is going to be our news bar section. Okay, the footer is going to be at the bottom, obviously, because it's a footer. Okay, so how do we accomplish this? Very, very simple. If you follow my technique, again, this is so simple, it's frightening. From this short series of videos, if you can create one page, you can create 50 pages. If you create 50 pages, you can, you can retire tomorrow. Well, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe you know, next week. Okay, so let's select the nav tag. Select the site nav tag. Select the tag, make a rule. Okay, so I select the tag, and I come over here to my CSS rules, and I make a rule for the tag. Now, we're going to do something called float. We're going to float this site nav tag to the left. Now, the reason is, in order for the main content to go to the right, we need to float this to the left. So how do we do this? Okay, let's make this less specific. We hit OK. Okay. We go to the box category, because these are where the choices are. Box category. Okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to make the site nav 150 pixels wide. It's going to be 150 pixels wide, and we're going to make the height the leftover space of the site. Well, how do I know the leftover space of the site? Well, the entire site, which was the wrapper tag we did in previous videos, was 650 pixels. Okay, so that's our starting point right now, 650 pixels. Okay, minus what? Minus the branding tag, which was 150. So we can minus 150 which if at the tab key, it gives us this number, okay? Minus the footer tag. The footer tag is gonna be 25 pixels high. Now, where am I getting this number from? If it helps you guys, you can put anything like this. Just get yourself a piece of paper and app kit and draw out exactly the size and shape of your site. Draw out how wide and how high you want each div tag, division tag to be, and you just plug in those numbers. Okay, so the height of this is going to be the height of this leftover height, which was the height of the site, 650, minus the branding tag, which is 150, minus the footer tag, which we're going to make 25. So that's going to be our starting point. Okay, now, very important step here. If I hit the apply option, watch what happens to the other tags. They run for cover. They're down here at the bottom here because it's not going to fit over here until you float this div tag to the left based on these choices, based on these choices. Now, before we do that, we want to put some padding in here because I don't want the content smashing up against the type, the box here. So we're going to put in, say, 10 pixels of padding. Now, in a previous video, I shared with you that if I hit the apply option right now, this is no longer 150 pixels high. I'm sorry, 150 pixels wide. This is 150 pixels wide plus 10 on the left and 10 on the right. So technically it's 170 pixels wide. I don't want it to be 170 pixels wide. I want it to be back to 150. So what do I do? I minus the left and right, which was 20. Again, fourth grade math here, I minus 20. Minus 20 from the width. The height, the height has 10 pixels on the top and 10 pixels on the bottom. I don't want this to be... 475. Right now it's 475. It's 495. 10 to the top, 10 to the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing. Minus 20. So if I hit the apply option, the div tag is now less wider. It's now 150 pixels wide. 455 plus 10 and 10. So it's 475. Now based on these choices, this dialog box, these are my choices here. I want to share with you a concept here. Anytime you're in a dialog box, unless the dialog box happens to be in Portuguese, no offense to Portuguese people, if you speak Portuguese, then you're fine. But I don't speak Portuguese. So if this dialog box is in Portuguese, I'd have a serious problem too. Well, guess what? 
It's not in Portuguese. It's in English. So get in the habit of this. Once you see a dialogue box, don't panic and say, well, I don't, you know, I don't know this program. You know I don't, what I'm doing? If you can read English based on these choices, what do you want to do? And here's a little caveat. If you're not sure what to do, what don't I want to do based on these choices? These are all choices. Choices for type, choices for background, choices for box, choices for list, which you haven't talked about. So based on these choices, what do you want to do? That's how you get good at software. I've been using Adobe software and teaching this stuff since 1987, 25 years. If there's a better, quicker, faster way to do things, I am the guy. I'm the guy you ask to solve problems. Don't believe me. 92 to 94, Adobe flew me out to California to, to, to get to, so I can teach their staff the best practices for their software, Illustrator and Photoshop. Because I'm a total mad scientist when it comes to this stuff. I know how to do the best, fast, quickest way. Now that I've kept you on your seats in suspense for this whole flow thing, we'll continue that in our next video. Wait, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's April 1st. Ah, April Fools, we'll do it right now. Just kidding. All right, so we're going to float this based on these choices. We're going to float this to the left because I want this navigation to go on the left. Now watch what happens. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. If I hit the apply option, then our div tags come back into place because this is floating to the left, therefore it allows content to go to the right. If you wanted to pick float right, which I could do here, then it's going to put the nap on the right. I don't want the nap on the right. I want the nap on the left. So I'm going to say float on the left. Make a change, save a change. Okay, so site nav is now right here, and site nav is floating to the left. So now we're going to go to rule for main content. So select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Select the tag, come over here, and make a rule. So main content. Let's think about main content. Main content is going to be how wide? Well, let's think about this. Main content is going to be the width of the site which was 900 pixels, okay, minus the site nav, which is 150 pixels, which gives us this number, minus the news bar, which is going to be 200 pixels, so minus 200. Fourth math here, guys, if you took woodshop or that kind of stuff in high school or grade school, you can put a 10-foot table into a 9-foot room. Either the room gets smaller or the table gets shorter. So you can't put more math, you can't put a bigger width than, the width than what the width supports. Say that 10 times fast. So the width of the wrapper tag was 900, minus site nav is 150, minus the news bar, which is going to be 200. So that's the leftover space. Our width for the main content is going to be 550. Then the height is going to be the same height as site nav, which was... The height of the site was 650 minus the branding tag, which is 150. So we have this number minus the footer, which was 25 pixels. So if I the apply option, there's the main content, but now the other content is gone because we need to float main content to the left. By floating main content to the left, the rest of the content goes to the right. So let's give this 25 pixels of padding, which means I need to do what? I need to minus, I need to minus 50. Width has to do with the left and right. Left 25, right 25. So minus 50. So this is very simple techniques, guys. It's, it's really this simple. It really is this simple. Height, height is the height of itself minus top and bottom 50. So I minus 50 for both and I hit OK. So there is main content. Okay. Now a couple little changes I want to do here. Site nav, I don't want I want to drop site nav down about another half inch. So how can I do that? Well I would hit rule for site nav. I'm not going to make a new rule because I already have a rule. Incidentally, we're going to rearrange this properly. Wrapper should appear before branding. Branding should appear before branding at H1 and H2, followed by site nav, followed by main content. Make a change, save a change. Okay, 
So let's go to site nav and box and put in the top of the box. We're gonna deselect same for all. We're gonna add plus 20 pixels, which means we need to minus minus 20 pixels from the height. Otherwise, it's going to knock out of the box. So look at the left here. Watch what happens. It now drops it down. I'm sorry. My mistake here. I wanted to say plus 20. There you go. That's correct. And it drops it down 20 pixels. Make a change. Save a change. Okay trying to keep these videos short. This video is coming up in 10 minutes, so let's see if we can finish this uh, news bar. We're not going to have time for the footer. We'll do the footer in the next video. Okay, so news bar. So select news bar. Select the tag, select the tag, and make the rules. Select the tags, make the rules. Now, we're going to do something different for news bar. We're not going to get news bar height. We're going to let news bar's height automatically adjust to itself. So I'm going to share with you how to do that. So I'm going to select the box category. Now, we already said that there's enough room here for the news bar to be 200 pixels. We're going to say 200 pixels. Why? We're not going to give it, we're not going to give it a height. We're going to put in 10 pixels of padding, which means I want to keep this consistent with 200 pixels wide. It's minus 20. Now, I want to share with you a concept here. If, in fact, the div tags are going right next to each other, back to back to back to back, then they all can flow to the left. But just because we can, I just want to share the flexibility of the program, we're going to float the news bar to the right. We're going to float the news bar to the right. We're going to hit OK. okay. So footer we'll do in our next video, but I just want to set up some basic structure, some basic ideas here. So we successfully created site nav, your site nav. Here's main content. Here's our news bar. So what have we accomplished here? We started out with a very basic page with just content. We turned the content into div tags. We then took the div tags and we formatted it instead of a wrapper tag. From there, we formatted the wrapper tag. We started building the rule structure for the site nav, uh, sorry, for the, for the branding tag. And then we finished by closing out by setting the structure, the rules for everything else. Now, important step here before we close this video. These are the rules. These are not the tags. These on the page, the tags exist. These are the rules for the tags. Without rules, we have total chaos. Now, why do I keep saying the word rule? It's because that's what it's called. If you come down here, it's what does it say? New CSS rule. Edit rule. New CSS rule. New CSS rule, editing rules, exact vocabulary. My objective is to get you to think the way the software thinks. I don't want to confuse you with semantics. As an example, as an example, other videos, I won't mention them, but there's other YouTube videos, there's other name videos beginning with an L, I won't mention their name. Their instructors will say, we'll come over here to the settings. Settings, what the hell does that mean, settings? Because no one... No place in here is to say the word settings. Very important step when it comes to software, guys. A software is a very literal thing. It doesn't understand semantics. It doesn't understand the colloquialisms. It doesn't understand things that sound alike, as an example. It doesn't understand the difference between knight on a horse with a K and knight at night. It doesn't. Computer doesn't understand the difference between, uh, between cloning and copying. Two different things to a computer. So get that to your head because it's a very important step that a computer software understands very literal terms. My objective is to get you to think the way the software thinks. It makes the whole process very, very enjoyable. So see you in the next video. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. You can click the subscribe button now. It's on the page about now. Just click subscribe. Also comments, suggestions, contacts, what you like, what you don't like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm here to help you. These are your tutorials. This is your video. So tell me how to direct you or tell, or, or actually tell, have you direct me what you want to see. Here to help. Thank you.